of the day, everyone, wherever you are across the face of the earth, welcome. This is Sports Africa. My name is still Asha Luluafemi. Uh, James Agri said, finally, it took, um, I don't know, it took uh, a lot of effort to bring James on the show today. Uh, James Agri, uh, welcome to the show. And I don't know if it will be in order for, to say Happy New Year to you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Femi. Um, I know that I've been away for some time, but, you know, <laughs> and uh, I know that you've been on my neck all this while, but uh, I'm happy to be back, and uh, let's hope that it stays like this. Okay, all right. Uh, everyone, I hope, uh, of course, it's um, the year 2024. Uh, it's uh, almost at the uh, home stretch right now. Okay, James, uh, let's get started. Maybe perhaps let's give our... Um, Let's give our, our fans across the world a, a hint of what we have today. Of course, the 2025 uh, Africa Women uh, Nations Cup 2024, so to say, was going to uh, be holding in 2025, as more of far from 5th of July to 21st July in 2025. But uh, CAF says it is uh, 2024 Africa Women uh, Cup of Nations. Hopefully, we hope that this, all this is going to stop when, of course, the competition will be holding a year, you know, after it's originally scheduled to hold. So the draw was held um, over the weekend or last week. And of course, we'll be looking at um, the, the chances of Nigeria, the big guns, Nigeria, uh, South Africa, uh, Morocco. And of course, we'll be looking at Senegal. Of course, efforts is, is in motion right now, uh, according to the Senegalese FA, to appoint a replacement for Ali Sisse. So coaches have been jostling for that position. And of course, Nigeria, yeah, Nigeria, they've qualified for the 2020 uh, five Africa Cup of Nations, but um, it was kind of navy. Uh, some Nigerian, uh, Nigerian football supporters were not happy with how it ended, particularly after that defeat to Rwanda. So we're looking at it, it seems the NFF has um, kept more over their search for a foreign manager, or is it that they've settled for Augustine Guavon? We look at the implications on the show today. So everyone, welcome, pull a seat to yourself, and let's uh, get on this ride together. James, uh, let's talk about the Africa Women Cup of Nations. Of course, like we said, it, it was originally uh, scheduled to hold next year, 2020. Uh, five, but um, uh, 2024 supposed to hold this year. I beg your pardon, supposed to hold this year, uh, but it will be holding next year. Uh, like I said, uh, 5th of July, of course, to so 26th July, it will be holding. But just let's look at the group. Of course, group A we have Morocco, Zambia, uh, Senegal, and DR Congo. Morocco, of course, they were close last uh, time, but lost to uh, champion South Africa. And of course, group B we have Nigeria, T uh, Tunisia. Algeria and Botswana, I think that should be an easy one for the Super Falcons. Then in Group C, we have South Africa, Ghana, Mali, and of course, Tanzania. James, but let's start with Group A, James. Morocco, Zambia, I think those two teams, you would say, of course, they will be favorite, but um, Senegal, Jair Congo, uh, they could be uh, somebody happy because we saw what um, TP Mazembe did at the uh, just concluded uh, African uh, uh, Women's Champions League. We, we saw what uh, uh, the TP Mazembe, the female team, did. No one expected that. Yes, um, for Group A, I think uh, that's a very uh, tricky group because you, you want to easily see Zambia and the Morocco. You know, they are based on um, their performance for some time now. Zambia has been like on the up this this past years, um, after making their first appearance in major tournament at the Tokyo Olympics, qualified for the World Cup, you know, and they've been doing well, finished uh, third at the last uh, World Cup, you know, so they've been performing really, really well. Um, for Morocco, the last was got to the final, they're not doing badly also, you know, and um, but um, you don't want to rule out the other teams. You know, just like what you said, TP Mazembe, they just won the car for me, you know, and I believe that most of their players will make up um, a large chunk of the national team. You know, that experience they played on the continent, I mean, played among the, against the best and came out tops, you know, so to expect to see some of those, if not most of them, in the, in the DRC uh, team. You know? So, like I said, it's, it's, it's uh, you, you easily want to come there and Morocco, but... Don't let us doubt that two teams, you know, because it's going to be going to be tough, you know. So for me, that that's where I, I look at it uh, when looking at uh, the game. Okay, of course, a lot of a lot of attention will be on uh, uh, Rachel Kondanaji and of course Barbara Vanda, of course for uh, Zambia. Uh, just Group B, like I said, I think the Super Falcons will be expected will be expected uh, to pick um, a maximum nine points in this group. Uh, Tunisia, Algeria, Botswana, these are um, 
um, of course, countries that do not have reputation when it comes to women's football. Of course, Nigeria defeated Algeria in, in, in uh, the double header friendly, so to say, last month. And we saw that it was more like an easy ride for the Super Falcon. So in Group B, you expect Nigeria. I think it's almost it's the easiest group of the three groups, you will say. James. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the, the, the weakest group, I mean, Botswana, um, they, they don't have, I mean, when you look at um, how far they come when it comes to women's football, they, uh, apologies to them, but no, no pedigree. For now, we don't see much from their side, but that the fact that they qualify for the WAFCON, I mean, it goes to show that um, there's something is happening there. You cannot just rule them out or see, I mean, you have to start from somewhere. In the social Zambia just started. You know, at some point they were just getting bashed left, right, and center. But now Zambia will face any team on the continent. You know, so the good thing is we are seeing teams like Botswana now coming up. You know, so like I said, the fact that they were able to qualify goes to show that football, women's football in that country is is gradually coming up. You know, so it's going to be a good experience for them. For Tunisia, they've been the competition before. You know, so there are no movies. Uh, Algeria too. Um, the last time Algeria played against the Falcons was a double header, and the Falcons won. But um, I think they would have learned one or two lessons there. You know, because I uh, don't. Yes, we would have learned a lot of. And I do expect the Falcons to just, you know, feel relaxed that okay, we defeated them during the um, friendly game, so we can, you know, you know, because I believe um, their, their coaching crew would have sat down and said, okay, this and this, because they will tell you that because the Super Falcons played at home. So like more of like uh, home advantage for them. You know, now you're going to play in North Africa. You know, it will be like you won't feel, maybe even the Algerians will feel more at home than the Super Falcon. You know, so I, I'm not going to see the Super Falcon going to have an easy ride against them. But uh, I mean, you can bet on them that uh, from this group, they, they should be able to come out top from this group. They might not get the nine points, just like what you said, but I see them at least you know, the seven points, but they will come out from the group. Okay, I just the last but not the least group C, South Africa, they defend the champions. Then it, it, it's, it's going to be very tricky, James, because here you also have Ghana. We've saw, we've seen what um, uh, uh, Nora Nopto has been able to do with uh, Ghana, with uh, uh, women's football in Ghana. So it's, 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 it's might likely be uh, some kind of a banana peel, even for for uh, the Bayana Bayana, if care is not taken. Then you have Mali, Mali coming into the fray. After years of, you know, absence, you know, we've talked about some of these teams, Mali, Cameroon, and of course, uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea, Guinea Bissau, you know, the, the women at some point, they were they were in the field of uh, a women football, but it's glad that, uh, or I'm glad, particularly glad, it's gladdened that uh, Mali, they are coming into free. Then you have Tanzania, James. Some of these things I imagine, like you, like you said, we had Zambia, you know, initially they were being bashed. But again, they represented Nigeria, uh, they, Africa, I should say, sorry. They represented Nigeria at the Olympics at the expense of Morocco. Morocco, who got to the final of the last African Women's Championship. So some of these things is hard to tell who might even likely make it out of the group. But in this instance, you might likely look at South Africa. Then the other team would be between Ghana and Mali. Yes, I, I think you want to go for South Africa, you know, because, um, I mean, they, they've, they've, come to, they've shown that... Um, all these years of, you know, trying to become, um, achieve that future of winning the Af Wafcon, they were able to eventually do it, qualify for the World Cup too. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't make it to the Olympics, uh, you know, after listening to the Super Falcons. So it's it's also a dicey group because they have the Black Queens that are making a return after years of, you know, not being able to qualify, you know. And at, at some point, it was um, the supremacy of <laughs> African football was, you were like, between Ghana and Nigeria, you know. Ghana, the, 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 these are the two teams that first played in the Wafcon final. Then at some point, Ghana just, you know, the, the women's team just, we just went off the radar. We didn't hear much from them again. So for now, it's, it's a kind of, it's like a comeback for them. And um, um, they've, they've been in the final of the Wafcon on several occasions. So so it's, it's a good one that they're back, you know. So it's not going to be easy for the, for Bayana, Bayana, but, uh, I think I still see them to, to to come out from the group. Mali too, uh, they too they've been around, you know. So it's just Tanzania. Who for me, I feel they are just coming to at least learn one or two things, even a couple of years, just like the way I cited Zambia. 
they will have learned one or two things, you know, improve where they feel they are not um, getting it right. And in a couple of years, they, they, they will come out um, just like this. I will always use Zambia as an, as an example, you know, for other teams. So, um, Femi, it's, it's a tough group, but I will still go for um, South Africa and uh, the Black Queens. If you ask me, I think Nigeria, Nigeria were completely, completely lucky in this draw. And James, before we leave the women, uh, uh, of course, the draws for the women uh, Africa Cup of Nations, I think one thing that worries me, as much as I'm gladdened uh, about uh, the emergence of countries like Tanzania and, of course, Mali, then Ghana coming back into into the you know the circle, I'm worried that Morocco is hosting everything, you know. Last time they, they hosted the, the African uh, Women Championship, they are hosting the game. The men are hosting the AFCON, the men AFCON, which is taking place in December 2025. James, I don't know, but this sends a complete wrong signal about African football in a continent where you have about 54 countries, I, I, I think. Now, why is it that just what, you know, we, we've talked about this, about this again, but again, this reminds that a lot needs to be done. You know, why is it that Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, these are jammed of African football, can't host? I know South Africa will be ready to host anytime, any day, but why? Why? Why is it that Morocco alone will be hosting like three three competitions, three massive international competitions within the space of three years? What happens to the, to others? I think CAV needs to do more in this in this situation. Uh, you know, for me, when it comes to um leading, I mean countries have to make their intentions known. You know, Nigeria have hosted, I think, like twice or three times uh, the WAFCON, 1998, 2002, 2006. South Africa have hosted uh, like three times too, you know, um, Morocco too, and now they are, they are doing it back to back. You know, So for me, it's about intentions. Unfortunately for me, the number of teams who have the um, capacity, the ability to, to host they are just so, so few. Um, you can't just pick teams, uh, countries at random and say, okay, you, you will be the next week. I mean, you have to show the interest that you want to host. So, so um, I think uh, CAF, for what is realized is that a lot of countries, they don't have the ability to host. So that's why maybe, maybe after we will have hosted this one, maybe the next edition, country will have, be able to come out and say they want to host. It's not, it's, not, it's not something that is too good because you want this thing to go around. You know, let's, it, it goes beyond just hosting. I mean, it gives you the opportunity of, you know, having but, a good deal of other countries. But, but James, sorry. Yeah, I, I think if, if countries have the necessary facility, they will, they will have the intention. They will put in for the bid for the hosting right. It's because most of these countries, like you and I, we've raised it many times on this uh, program, where you have countries, even... Common Africa Cup of Nations games, they have to play away from well, their home soil. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they have to yeah. play. I'm sure. I'm sure the reason for this is because if you pull out Egypt, maybe Egypt, South Africa, Morocco. I'm not sure any other country on this continent of Africa can host any tournament within the space of a year. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I remember when the South Africa hosted the World Cup 2010, sticking back to host the Afcon. They they hosted the Afcon 2013. They also hosted Chan 2014 to so show that they have everything is there. They have facilities. Morocco too, for the fact that they are hosting the um, WAFCON back to back and the Champ Women's Champions League. This is the I think this is the fourth edition that they just they just completed. They've been hosting, you know. So it's going to show that they are ready. But how many countries can come out and and tell you that uh, yeah, they can host this tournament? That's what I'm saying. Tournament? That's what I'm saying. Rather than, rather than rather than yeah. You know, but so what the, the competition must go on. That's just that's just the sad part. The competition must go on because okay. I mean, look at the 2027 20, Afcon. We're going to be hosted by three countries. Three countries that are going to host it because just one of these cannot. They can't do it. They don't have the you know. So for me, it's, it's, it's a sad development in Africa. You know, football football has gone beyond just uh, on the pitch stuff. I mean, we have to start exploring. Uh, or the other means you can't, you can't keep recycling the host. I mean, you come tiring. Like I said, when you when uh, you host tournament, host tournament, so when you host tournament, it's like uh, you're going on uh, a tourist um, experience. You know, I mean, you want to explore, but when you keep going to a particular country all the time, I mean, you become boring at some point. 
So, I mean, okay. I mean, scalps scalp their hands are tied, honestly. And a lot of these okay. countries, they don't just have it, you know. So, okay. just pray that okay. uh, we will get out of this. Okay, I, I just feel that Africa is not ready. Africa is not ready. When we're ready, we'll move from seeing sports as a social investment, you know, uh, um, as a um, as as a leisure, I should say, the, from move from seeing it as leisure to a massive social uh, investment. Uh, James, let, let's let's talk about uh, Senegal. Of course, currently they have um, uh, Theo, who is the uh, caretaker manager. Uh, you know, since um, at least he's edited uh, the the position of uh, the head coach of the Terenga Lions for the three-year-old uh, Theo. Of course, he oversaw the, their wins in the. 2025 Afghan qualifiers against Burundi and a very difficult one away at Burkina Faso, and of course, but uh, and of course, uh, um, yeah, Burundi, Burkina Faso, and of course, um, 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 Mali. Now let's talk about these games. The quest to succeed, uh, Mali, you see, it, it, it's hot enough. And um, I, I read a piece about um, um, opinion of journalists in Senegal who are saying that. Uh, uh, they believe that Papi uh, Theo has done enough you know, to occupy that position because they are particularly referring to the four new win over Burundi in the 2024, uh, 2024 Afcon qualifier as um, as one was particularly saying it was one that Epi made the decision that he would do well in the position uh, uh, if appointed uh, because he said the Burundi they are very very uh, technical side but James let's look at it. Mali, Burkina Faso, and of course Burundi. Those are the three matches that uh, uh, Theo has won since he became manager. They talk about um, uh, the pattern. He has a pattern and the tenacity of the team. Uh, some, some, some one of them was a uh, journalist said, particularly the games were not boring. You know, you kept on seeing new things. The games were not boring. Like this is what we keep seeing every time. But James, my, my question is, would you hail, would you praise the Senegalese FA for looking inward again? Rather than going outside to look for foreign managers like we've seen other African countries do. Well, if uh, if it's based on what he has done so far, I mean, it's just go ahead with the job because if it's decides to bring someone from outside, I mean, it's like we're going to start all over again. You know, I mean, there's somebody who has he has um uh handled three games and um, came out with good results. So why not allow him to continue? I mean, if uh, uh, at least if we were not given the, that that opportunity, I don't think we would have been able to win the Afcon and qualify for two World Cups. Which are no mean feat at all. So, I think um, I think they should they should they should follow that route. I mean, if if as if the start coaches based on uh, the, the results, I mean, so far so good, you know. So why not just give him the opportunity and um, and, and let's see how it goes, you know, because. You know, when you bring in somebody new, I mean, it's like a new chapter. Now everybody has to now start adjusting to another, uh, what is it called, uh, another uh, ideas. You know, all coaches come with their own ideas. And I think they've bought into his ideas. So why not allow him to just continue, you know? So I think that time we, we, we start giving our own that opportunity. Like I said, if CC was not given the opportunity, he wouldn't have become an uh, Afghan uh, winner, you know? So... You are you are patient with uh, uh, so I think they should be also be patient with um, with the coach. I mean, the, the World Cup qualifier is just um, around the corner, just how I many more less than five months away, if I'm not mistaken. So, and I don't think they are even doing badly in the qualifier. So let's let's let's. I mean, these are that's even for me that's that's even a bigger test. I mean, I started well, so it's a gradual thing. So I think they will carry that momentum into the World Cup qualifiers. Well said, James. Of course, like I said, uh, Patricio oversaw uh, a four-nil win over Malawi at home. Then a difficult, difficult one-nil win away at Burkina Faso, and of course, a two-nil victory over Burundi in the final uh, 2025 Afcon qualifier. So, the, the 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 decision among major major uh, football stakeholders in Senegal is just give him the job already. James, that brings us to Nigeria. Finally, as we uh, try to wrap up on the show. What is going on with the NFL, James? It seems the NFL are no longer in search uh, for of a foreign manager to replace uh, Fernando George. Um, with what you saw in the last two games of the Afghan qualifier against um, uh, Benin Republic and, of course, uh, Rwanda, and these are two teams, James, 
that Nigeria will be facing in, in the in the World Cup qualifier, 2020 World Cup qualifiers in 2025. James, would you say that honestly, objectively, would you say that the NFL should uh, give the job permanently to Igbo because that has thrown up it's a serious debate. Some ex internationals are saying that, particularly um, Friday, he said in an interview, former Nigeria international, he said if Finiti George, I'm um, sorry, Augustine Gwavon, I should say, if Augustine Gwavon wins or won the two matches against the Benin Republic and Rwanda, he should be given the job on a permanent basis. But that didn't happen. So that has you know, divided the camp, so to say, already. But would you say that Iguavon should be given the job on a permanent basis, or he should be allowed to fully return to his role as the uh, the technical uh, the, the technical director of the Nigeria Football Federation? Well, for me, I think they should just give him the job and let us have peace. I mean, according to the thing that it's about to look for a foreign coach, something that we now end the whole thing is about unpaid salaries. So, and you know this is the same NFL that they don't have money. So just stick with it. I mean, the players are used to it, but um, it's not as if it's a new age. So, I think this should be like a sports team, if I'm not mistaken. They qualify the team with two games to spare. So maybe you can argue that the other two, the two games are inconsequential. So nobody was ready to sacrifice themselves to put in 100%, you know. So, you know, so for me, I think the, 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 the important thing for me in these um, two games that they didn't win is, I mean, these are teams that you're seeking to play them in the World Cup qualifiers. You know, I know how important it is. You've not won a game, you know. So, I mean, you have an idea. I mean, you've played um, Rwanda, like, uh, how many times? Twice, and you not, yeah. if it, yeah, twice. twice, and you only got to draw, and you lost at home. You know, so I think that this will kind of uh, make them realize that um, they have a lot of work to do. You know, the, the, their position in the, in the group is not looking pretty at all. You know, so, I mean, um, I, I think they should just use the two games as um, an opportunity to, to, to right all the wrongs in the work of qualifiers. Like I said, they should just let him have the job. I mean, I mean he has qualified the team for the Af for AFCON. That was the goal, and, and that was the target, and he made the target. He even did it in record time, two games to spare. You know, that was what we always used to hear um, General Cho when he was around. You know, I feel like once we did it, so we have to give him his flowers. You know, so I mean, let's let's continue. Let's just have that continuity. The players, they, they say they have a problem with with him. You know, they they they, they know themselves. So rather than bringing someone who at the end of the day you know what to end it, money, money, money. So we don't want to go into that again. The World Cup, but they need all the concentration, all the focus. You know, so for me, that's just it. Okay, but just finally, as, as we wrap up, if you if he's given the job on a permanent basis and Nigeria failed to qualify for the World Cup, would you blame him? Well, uh, I would blame him because uh, if the, the ball game can start on his, on his decks, you know, because, um, I mean, you are the coach and if the team does well, we will hate you. If the team don't do well, we will we take the blame. You know? So if the team don't... But, 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 but would Cup, you say that the damage has been done already before... If you have three points from four matches, you know, we have three points from 12 matches. So why would you blame him, James? Why? Yeah, uh, because, um, I mean, you have the, uh, the opportunity of turning the offer down. I mean, he is the director, you know. So, I mean, uh, I, I believe he wants the job. I don't, I don't think, because if he doesn't want the job, you, you will have you know, said a no. But it's like if he's someone that wants to really prove a point. It's really that failure to qualify for the last World Cup. I think he's trying to right that wrong because it was a very painful one, you know, again, especially against the weak Black Stars team. You know, so for me, I would blame if you don't qualify for the World Cup, you know, because you are uh, coaches that they are judged by their, their by results, you know. So oh, you still being okay. judged by that that last experience. I think that's why a lot of people they'll tell you they've not recovered from that World Cup uh, qualifier. You know. So let him let him have the job and you know that you know the tax that is ahead of him. Okay, of course, Nigeria still have six matches to play and they are condemned to win those six matches. They have uh, three points from four matches. They are fifth in a system uh, stand in group, uh, group C of the qualifiers. We have uh, countries like Rwanda, South Africa, and the Republic dictating the pace in that group. So, uh, 
it's going to be a lot of pressure on Igbo Hopefully, if given the job, it would be able to uh, turn the things around. At least uh, at the early start of the 2025 African qualifiers, Nigerians were satisfied with uh, the turnaround that they saw in his under him compared to uh, what happened, particularly in the attack, compared to what happened under our former uh, manager, Ose Pesero. James Agberebi, thank you so much for your thoughts. And it's good to see you once again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Emil. Um, see you next time. Mm, and our producer, of course, thank you so much for always uh, uh, doing putting the, all this together for us. And, and to you out there, the biggest, the biggest thanks goes to you, wherever you are. Please don't forget to click on that notification button so that you get the video as soon as they drop. We've said that the comment section is entirely yours. Please, whatever you think we can do right here, we've said it many times in your country, what is happening to football in your country, even if it's local football, please let us know in the comment section. Who, of course, we'll do our research and of course, bring it to you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, thank you. This remains Sports Africa. Thank you so much. And we wish you a very, very wonderful week ahead. Bye for now. <laughs>